They're creepy and they're spooky. Mysterious and spooky. They're all together cuties. The Inver family. They do not have to backbone. They've got a lot of good songs to make the world much better. The Inver family. We think they're spineless wonders. You cannot count their numbers. You'll never steal it under the Inverb family. From insects to arachnids, you're gonna learn a lot, kids. They're making much better. The Inverb family. Cynthia should do a dance. <laughs> We're good. We're getting good. It works. All right. Yay. Sorry. Sorry about that, guys. I know. I think you should do it again. What do you guys think? We should. Should we do the song again? What do you guys think? I don't know. Somebody heard the song. Oh, we got no. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I was very bad. 
I'll tune it again, but it was to the tune of the Adams family. And the point was, <laughs> they may be creepy and goofy, but they're really, really cool too. Yeah. And we're talking about that huge kingdom of animals called invertebrates, right? The invert family or invertebrate family. So invertebrate, get your fingers typing into that chat box and tell me what is an invertebrate? What could that be? Tell me, I know you smart people. I've worked with y'all <laughs> enough at this point to know how very intelligent you guys are. Oh, oh here we go. Nice. Spineless animal. Bring it, Charles. They don't have a backbone. It has have no spine. Nice. Right. 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 You guys got yep. it. And I knew that you would. Um, basically, living living animals come in kind of two categories, right? They either have a backbone or they don't. So the inverts do not, right? And that is one huge kingdom of animals. So uh, Nikki likes to throw this factoid out there. She reminded us of this. So for every one of you, one there time. are about 200 million of them. <laughs> How's that sound, guys? <laughs> I think we're outnumbered when it comes to the invert family. Good right? thing they're small. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing. Pretty much, they're they're <laughs> small and they're not going to completely overtake guys. But actually, if there is one takeaway that we would love for you guys to get out of this entire program, it's that even though we're calling them creepy crawlies, they're not so creepy. Some of them are a little like oh, just crawly. <laughs> I want to learn more about that before I uh, some of the internet. <laughs> but um, they're really just an incredibly useful and needed a section of animals, right? And today, what we're going to do is, because that's such a large um, kingdom of animals, we're going to break it down a little bit for you and just talk about um, the arthropods, which actually is the largest phylum of animals. So it's a huge section of animal. And arthropod is actually a Greek word Anybody by any chance, which brain's going? Who speaks Greek? Can you? <laughs> Who speaks Greek? <laughs> this is not the problem. Look at this is the classroom. But <laughs> if you do, please tell me what do you think? And guess. I love guesses. You'll learn more if you get it wrong because you don't want to get it wrong again. So you really remember when you're corrected, right? So tell me what you think arthropod means. It's a Greek word. You can break it down into arthro and pod. And tell me. Okay, real quick, while they're figuring that out, uh, I just want to make a comment that Atticus says <laughs> that uh, the song broke the internet. Both <laughs> were really hard on that. <laughs> Hey, was it the song? Maybe the singing? I don't know. <laughs> so while you're giving me your your uh, arthropod answers, I just want to let you know how truly those the invertebrate category, the really only thing all invertebrates have in common is the fact that they do lack a backbone and uh, have some have an exoskeleton. <laughs> so well actually arthropods are the ones with the exoskeleton. Yep. And now I'm confused. So, <laughs> Easy to just do. Tell me what you think, guys. <laughs> any good, any good guesses? Arthur, Arthur, uh, centipede, um, spiders. Nothing really specific. Oh, whoa! Oh, I know it was Charles. Um, animals <laughs> with a cephalothorax, 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 <laughs> and abdomen. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, sometimes, yeah. sometimes. They're they're so, a type of arthropod. Those yeah. Be arachnids. You might be yeah. thinking of arachnids. Um, so arthropod is a Greek word. Arthro meaning joint. Uh, so to give me some hints there. You guys heard of arthritis? Arthritis. Yeah. Arthritis yeah. Pain in your Extra joints. joints. Right? Yeah. So uh, my son actually has a medical condition called arthrogryposis, meaning his joints are curved. But arthro means joint, and pod. Anyone ever have? Put your foot up. Put your foot up there. Oh, Show, oh, can do it. Can oh, you do it? Yeah. Make me have to visit. How about we do it? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's there you go. Oh, well. Like a tripod has three legs or yeah. feet, right? So, arthropod. There we go. The arthropodophyllum. He 
huge, huge. And that's where we're talking about animals with exoskeletons. Mm -hmm. um, that exoskeleton is so vital, right? They don't have their bones on the inside. They do have that chitinous or uh, exoskeleton kind of shell near chitin around them. And that exoskeleton is very handy. It helps keep their moisture right within them. It keeps them from evaporating into nothing. It's a protective thing for um, arthropods. And it just comes in really handy when you don't have a backbone, right? Mm -hmm. Or a good skeletal system. So um, we have a question. So, sure, sure, sure. so I don't know, but I'm sorry if I butcher your name, but Christelle, Crystal, Crystal, <laughs> I'm sure I well say it. Wants to know what is your favorite arthropod? Oh, wow. Gee, I haven't, I haven't <laughs> never thought about it. Never yeah. really broken it down into favorites. Although I am going to bring a friend out in just a second, and they're cool. They they might even be my favorite. I don't know, but um, I'm going to bring them out and let's see how this goes. <laughs> you know, they might be my favorite. So hang in there with me. Let me grab some gloves. Certainly, what we do when we and especially something with an exoskeleton. The exoskeleton can be pretty fragile, mm -hmm. right? And it's so needed. Uh, many of you may know when arthropods grow, what happens to their exoskeleton? You, you tell me that while I'm getting a friend. All right. I'm going to ask you guys. So as you get ah, older and bigger, Claire says they shed. They shed or molt, right? Kind of like when you guys get bigger, you don't keep wearing the same clothes, right? You go and buy bigger clothes. Exactly. <laughs> so, I'm going to try to get, oh, he's already doing something I'm going to talk about for you. This, yeah, this is my yeah. friend, the giant African, sorry. <laughs> Cynthia's hands. <laughs> oh, look at him. Aww. Oh, no, we got a zoo. No, 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 no. Remember, they may be crawly, but they're not that creepy. Look at them. I they look cute. Oh, who could not love that face? Aww. Okay, guys, so these are, this is a giant African millipede, um, the largest species of millipedes out there. And believe it or not, y'all, these are not full grown. <laughs> They can actually grow to be 10, 12 inches in length. So these guys still have a lot of growing to do. And when we talk about millipedes, she's so cute. Uh, Yay. Cute. He, she, we don't really know. <laughs> what are those? <laughs> they really are. And millipedes in particular, guys, they're not venomous. They're not anything that we have to really be afraid of. I'm wearing these gloves more for the protection of the animal than I am for myself. Um, it feels a little bit like uh, when they crawl on you, I don't know, kind of like Velcro or something. It's just, they have so many legs. Now, I know a lot of you may think, well, they must have a uh, million because they're millipedes, but no. And milli also uh, in Roman numerals is a thousand, but they don't necessarily have a thousand legs. What they do have is body segments. And they have two pairs of legs for each segment. So if they have a hundred segments, how many legs do they have? Get that math. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was fast. Claire says, well, 2200 and then 200. And then Charles says 400. <laughs> well, if they have a hundred legs and they have four legs per segment. Uh, Paula says a thousand or excuse me, I think I was leaving. Mm -hmm. Um Charles hundred times four. All right. Four hundred, <laughs> two hundred from Heather. There we go. I think we I think I heard it goes so four hundred, right? So four per segment. So um they it would be rare to have a millipede that actually had a thousand legs. That's a lot. That's a, a an overestimate. But anyway, these guys I think are they top out at around seven fifty. Yeah, so. maybe six or seven hundred yeah. would be the the full size adult that? giant African millipede. <laughs> um, and let's get him in a better spot <laughs> here. Um, these guys are incredibly, incredibly beneficial. <laughs> 
And I'm like, oh, well, if you did that on no, well, that's good. Very good program, <laughs> but um, very beneficial animals, um, kind of a lot like earthworms. They like to burrow in the ground, um, so they aerate the soil for you. They're really good for your garden. Um, so what does the aerate mean? Oh, aerate. Yeah. yeah. Help me with that one. Uh, what do you guys think that means? Let's ask them. What do they? What do you think aerate? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we know, right? I hope we know. You know. Oh no. <laughs> okay, so teach Megan, guys. Tell Megan yeah, what aerate means. Tell Megan what it means to aerate your soil. I agree with Angela. Too many numbers. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going bring nutrients by bringing the air to it. Okay. Nice. Thank you. Nice job, Claire. Right. You no, know, Angela, you're smart cookie. Yeah, so they crawl through the soil. They make tunnels and burrows, and increasing that air allows it to be a healthier, uh, place because roots don't get as crowded and they don't have to compete for the, the nutrients in the soil as much. And speaking of nutrients in the soil, these guys, as well as a lot of other um, arthropods, are incredible at being nature's recyclers. Okay, first of all, guesses as to what millipedes might eat. Hopefully not gloves. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully not gloves, <laughs> Nikki said. Or humans, no. I can promise you they're just too cute to eat us. Any guesses, guys? Sorry if I can't get him. Um, no. Not yet. So they live in the soil. Think about that. I'll tell you that. They actually live in tropical regions. Of, well, these particular ones are African, giants, African millipedes, but there are many species throughout the planet. They like the soil. They like the moisture of the soil. They like the things that end up in the soil to eat. Like dead things, like old decaying plants and leaf litter and carcasses of other dead things. <laughs> and so they help us clean up, first of all, right? Mm -hmm. We need that. Nikki always says when she talks about these guys, imagine a world without nature's cleanup crew, without things like dung beetles and millipedes and animals that are willing to eat all the gunk that's out there and help clean it up for us. Now there's a big word for that gunk and all the stuff that kind of lands like, on yep. the ground and ends up in the in the bottom of the yep, just it, like worms the yeah. crystals yep and it's nice called stuff. they like it's the big word is called oh very close Claire Detroit thank you very close so it's detritus right it's just a big word that means all the junk that settles at the bottom either of the ocean or of the land so if you eat detritus, if you eat herbs, you're an herbivore. If you mm -hmm. eat detritus, what are you? Detritivore. Thank you. <laughs> so this cutie pie is a detritivore. You like to eat all that stuff and help clean it up for us. And by doing that, what goes in must come out, all right? So he's recycling. So when he poops, which I was hoping he would do for you because last time I held him, he did <laughs> right in my hand. Um, but so obviously when they eat that stuff, um, some of it comes back out as poop and those minerals and vitamins and healthy things that are in that soil, go, I mean, in that gut, go into soil and help make a much healthier ecosystem. And actually, guys, I was just reading about some pretty recent uh, scientific studies being done in the tropics where millipedes are native. And believe it or not, they, the scientists have kind of taken sections of the soil and studied it very carefully. Some where there were populations of millipedes living and some where there were none. And the, the um, mineral count and oxygenation level of the soil where the millipedes live, much better, much stronger. So these guys, they're our friends. They mm -hmm. are good. They're good to have around. They're not out to get you, and they're not out to hurt you in any way. Now, what I also want to do is compare these guys to someone they're often confused 
with, and those are the centipedes, right? The centipedes and the millipedes are, are two very different <laughs> creatures. Both arthropods, but very different. Um, let me get a picture for you of a can centipede. Get it? Sure, that'd be great, Nikki. And we can talk about the differences. So as you can see, let's, Nikki's going to show you. So there's a centipede. A little bit different. What do you notice about a centipede? About a centipede that's different from our friend the millipede. A couple of things stand out to me right away. How about it you? It longer legs. Yes. Yes. The color yes. says look, looks meaner. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like that. In a way, they do. And there's might be a reason for that. Oh, more colorful. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. That's the biggie. Those are great, guys. Those are great. The rest of them might be a little bit difficult to do. Oh, Carl says the legs are angled apart more than a millipede. Absolutely. Oops, oops, sorry, Charles. that was my bad. Sorry, guys. So on a <laughs> the camera. those legs are more angled out. Oh. Whereas on our friend the millipede, they kind of go down. Um, I don't want to disturb what's already on that microscope. Oh, okay. Okay. So, well, you can hold it in your hands. Okay. And then gonna, just, this is really cool. A really cool new team yeah. today, guys, that I'm going to try and work with. with <laughs> so, um, yeah, so you can hold it up over those and then okay. focus on okay. what's close to your hand. Give me a sec. And, and then I will. That's so hard to hold. And <laughs> we have a really cool new uh, team here. Wow. And <laughs> there we go. How about do you? How about you focus for her? <laughs> you just hold. Let let us. There we go. There one of the differences we talked about the number of legs on the millipedes, right? They have four per segment. So centipedes only have two per segment. That was a really good one. Um, Can you guys see the the TV? There we are. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna come in a little bit closer. You guys can get a little bit closer to the TV. Here we go. We're having all kinds of technical fun today. <laughs> you know I mean? This is technology for you. But um, so we noticed that you can really see those body segments, and there's his antenna. Centipede have antenna as well. Those on the centipede, they're longer. Um, his whole, the millipede's entire body, his head and his body are rounded, whereas the centipede you might have seen in that picture mm -hmm. is more flattened. Yeah, those so, legs. That's so cool. They deploy themselves very, very differently. All right, coming back. <laughs> the millipede is pretty much strictly a detritivore, so they don't have that strong need to uh, hunt down their prey. So they don't have, they don't move quickly, and they don't have anything like teeth or fangs. In fact, they have a very weak mouth, and uh, they just need that to eat that litter layer, right? But the centipede has a, not only a very strong mouth, but they actually have fangs. And if you can now focus on the screen, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. There you go. But the, okay. these, this is a close up using that microscope of real centipede oh, That's pretty fangs. good. I know, yeah. sorry, I'm trying to do oh, two got, things at once. Here we go. I'm gonna come up closer. Here we go. Zoom in it because you can't zoom and zoom. So you yeah, have to literally. Right <laughs> oh, that's cool, Nikki. That's a good shot. Yeah, so that, that is a highly magnified, um, real fangs from a centipede. <laughs> so centipedes. So yay millipedes. Yeah, they are venomous. <laughs> they are. They can kill their prey. Now, uh, a bite from a centipede, centipede is not usually too dangerous for a human or fatal, but still something you should stay away from if you can. Um, but that's their defense, right? If you went to bother them, you might get bit. And that's how they kill their prey, of course. Millipedes have a different defense. They coil up into a ball, generally, and that exo, they use that exoskeleton to protect you know, their heads because uh, they need their heads to live, right? And also, if they're really upset, they have the ability to put out a very pungent, foul smelling liquid. And that's a great defense for them. And sometimes it does 
help fend away the predators. So okay, we have a question. Sure. So Christelle wants to know, is that a boy or a girl? Well, hold on. <laughs> uh, I have no idea. That's I don't know how to you can't really see it. You have to get really close. Probably could look under the microscope and find out, but the seventh segment in segment. Yeah, so the, yeah, in the girls, in the girls look normal, and the boys it's a little bit different. I think they're either they're they have a extra part, or they're I think they were missing a leg, and they have an extra part they there. Have, um, okay, so here we go. Look for the zookeepers can tell by looking on the underside of the animal, yeah. and look on the seventh segment yeah. for a bottom which is normal if it's a male. Yeah. So females would look the same, no missing. They have their four legs on that seventh segment, but the males would look a little bit different on that seventh segment. <laughs> so I'm gently trying to help. I don't know that you can. I don't Perhaps think you're going to see it. untrained eye, it might be a difficult thing to do, but um, just such a really, really cool animal. And yeah. Oh, why do they have so many legs? Why do they have so many legs? Hey, that's cool. That's a great question. So. Uh, the reason animals have anything is because usually they need it to survive in their environment, right? We call that an adaptation. An animal has different abilities to survive in their world. And oh, action shot! Oh, it pooped! <laughs> Recycling at its best. Recycling, not exactly on cue, Millie, but whatever. <laughs> um, take it. So, so the um number of legs yep. is just to help them get around in their terrain they live in the soil and each time one pair of legs digs into that soil it helps them move the soil and push it out of the way so they can get access to all the good stuff they're looking for right yep. and april wants to know how do they see uh how do they see? their eyesight is terrible actually yep. um of course when you're living down in you know the earth the moist soil it's not really a matter of seeing it's just a matter of getting to your food source by walking and feeling they can pick up on um i believe vibrations with those legs mm -hmm. mostly stuff and of course they have the antenna now their antenna are smaller than the centipede but still very very useful and that helps them kind of pinpoint what they're looking for or searching for all right so cool all the questions we got Boy, they're just them. pooping away Good job. <laughs> all right guys well i'm going to put away our friend the millipede and i hope um that we've helped maybe offset some myths that all creepy crawl all crawlies are creepy we're not there's nothing creepy about this cutie pie all right i'm going to put them away while nikki is going to bring out our next friend <laughs> You guys, so I know Charles, you were asking lots of questions about them. <laughs> there we go. Let's see if I can get her so she's a little bit more comfortable. There we go. How's that? Oh, there we go. She's so pretty. So, a lot of people probably find this one probably the creepiest out of all of our crawlies. Matter of fact, they have, does anybody know what it is? There's actually a name for when you have a fear. Here to fall. I know. Longer. That's we have a fear of these critters. Let me know what that's called. Oh, Charles, arachnophobia. Nice job, right? But as when right here, when our Chilean rose tarantula, she's not so creepy. She's actually pretty cool. Thank you. <laughs> she's finally chilling, relaxing settling in and so spiders are amazing and they are an arthropod they have an exoskeleton and if megan would be so kind oh, yes. let's put we actually have a cool shed or molt from a spider from one of our tarantulas we have one of our ambassadors so as they get older they don't molt as much so she maybe molts once a year, but when they're young and growing, just like we do with our clothes, they molt a lot more and they outgrow their exoskeleton. Oh, <laughs> Wendy says she's so pretty. She is. She's probably our favorite. We all love her. That's a beautiful right, shot. There we go. Okay, we're going to look at this screen, guys. <laughs> See what you think. 
may have to. I, I'm gonna get out of the way. I really wish we could zoom and zoom. I know. No Sorry. Zoom zoom. No zooming and zoom. What happens in this? Check it out. <laughs> what are you looking at? Whoa. That's so cool. that There's a close up <laughs> of a mole. Oh, look at the things. That's awesome. Yeah. What do you guys notice? What do you see covering that molt? That spider. So we see hair. Yeah. Right. We see uh, vi oh, vib look at that. Vibris. Vibris. Yeah. Nice. More hair. Spear. <laughs> <laughs> spear. No, yeah. Dylan. That's, that's what we're trying to um, right. weigh against, buddy. All right. Okay. Let's turn her back. But it's just cool to be that close and see that. It really is. It is very cool. So, right. So they're covered in these beautiful hairs. So she's called a Chilean rose tarantula. Let's see. <laughs> okay. it's just hold on. An awkward angle. It's hard to hold her so you can see. But she's got this really pretty. Oh. <laughs> there. I'm there coming. I just Thank had you. to. There we go. I'm trying to not scare her. There you the go. Microphone. There we go. So, as um, Charles was saying earlier, he kept saying, asking about the cephalothorax and the abdomen. Right. So, in spiders, that's what they have. So spiders or the arachnids, they have a cephalothorax, and cephalo means head, thorax means chest. So their head and their chest are kind of combined into one body unit, and then they have the abdomen. So that front round part is their cephalothorax and that big kind of part on their backside with those little knobs on the neck. Can you see in there? Yeah. They're called her spinnerets. That's her abdomen. So there are two body parts, which makes them different. Then your insects, that kind of thing. So she's got two body parts. And then how many legs? As an arachnid, how many legs do arachnids have? Let's see how many of you guys know. How smart you are. Ah, Claire says eight. Nice, eight legs. With, when you look at Gwen, it almost looks like she's got 10. Yeah. Because at the front, she's got these two that kind of by her mouth, they're not quite legs, they're called putty pelts. And those are kind of their sensi or sensing organs. And also shoving uh, food into my mouth organs. <laughs> I need some of those. I need extra ones. <laughs> so, yes. Um, Christelle was wondering how many eggs she can lay in a year. Oh, well, they can lay, depends on the species. Some of them can lay from anywhere from 100 to 700. And we had, um, we have a curly haired tarantulas that are our, our animal ambassadors just had a bunch of babies. I can't remember how many they had, but. They showed a picture of it and there were at least hundreds. There were several hundreds in there. It was so creepy, but cool at the same time. It was one of those creepy, cool things. Uh, but yeah, so they have so many. And why do you think they have so many? Why do you think animals like this and a lot of our animal inverts lay so many eggs and have so many babies? What do you guys think? What is the advantage of oh. having a ton of babies? Could you imagine having to feed 300 that's babies? That's just because most of them die. Right, why? Yeah. What happens? They have to make sure they survive. That's why they have so many. Right, dogs. so, right. Because, right, one thing we need to touch on, there's so many inverts out there. And the reason there are so many, because a lot of animals depend on them as food. And actually, Miss Gwen here, eats other insects. And so she needs those insects as a food source. So as babies, they're very, very tiny, very vulnerable, and really good food for lots of animals. So very few will actually grow to become adults. So I'm not sure the percentage, but yeah. So that's why they have so many babies. But I want to go back to those hairs, because those hairs, why do you think they have so many hairs on their body? What do you guys think? The spiders. Why is why is she so hairy? Oh, Gwen. Why are you for here? sensing. For sensing, absolutely. Lots of different things. For sensing, um, some hairs are for smelling. Some are for feeling, like feeling vibrations as I talk. Or sometimes they're for they're like spikes. And some of them are for defense, right? So these hairs oh, right there on her backside, on the abdomen by her spinnerets. <laughs> Those are actually super spiky little hairs. 
and or we call them the fancy science word is urticating, urticating hairs. It's a fun word to say. And so when something is about to eat her, she will use her back legs and she will kick those hairs off. Now imagine the next time you go to eat your favorite food, like, I don't know, pizza or, or salad or whatever your favorite food is. And as you bring it close to your mouth, all of a sudden these little spiky hairs get shot in your face, going mm -hmm. in your nose, your mouth, your eyes. Oh, would you want to eat that food anymore? What are you guys saying? I don't know about you, have you, whenever you get something in your eye, that's like the worst, isn't it? I mean, you're just, you just, you don't even want to, you're not thinking about food at that point. You're thinking, oh my God, let me get these out of my eyes. It's horrible. And that's what they're thinking of. So they will, you know, the animal that goes to eat her all of a sudden has a bunch of little hairs in its eye. Probably not going to want to eat her anymore. So it's a pretty good way of defending yourself. So those hairs, lots of functions for sensing their world and defense and all kinds of different things. So pretty cool. All right. Uh, so they are what we call, like I said, they eat other bugs. So they're kind of like pest controllers. So there are other insects that keep other insect species in check, making sure there's not too many of them in the world. And we need that. So we need those pest controllers, keeping those other animals in check. So very important job and awesome animals. And you guys have any questions about Gwen? Not seeing any. No? Oh, Did I scare oh, everybody what, off? Atticus uh, wants to know what kind again. Oh, Might have missed what species. All right, so she, she is a Chilean rose tarantula. So she's from South America or Chile. And she's rose because a lot of them have that kind of a pinkish color to their hairs. And you can kind of see it on her cephalothorax. I really see it. In my angle, I can see uh -huh. it. You know, it's kind of hard to get you guys to see it at this angle. Anna's curious, mm -hmm. is she venomous? So. Yes. So a lot of spiders, pretty much almost all spiders are venomous. So they have venom because that's how they eat. Most spiders have tiny little mouth parts. So they prefer a liquid diet. And so they will actually inject venom, which is modified spit. Basically it's the spit in your mouth and it's just a lot stronger. And it injects it into the animal and it kind of freezes them so they can't move. And then they inject more and it kind of starts to digest them just like your spit helps you to digest your food and it turns that insect and we feed her crickets so she injects her venom into the cricket and turns it kind of into a cricket soup and then she slurps it up and eats it Very so cool. they need it to be able to eat so they need that venom to be able to eat and she knows that she can't eat me and so she doesn't waste that venom on me so she's very likely not to hurt me and most venom is not very strong. It's kind of like they, they say it's about like being stung by a bee. You know, if you're allergic to bees, yes, you'll have a problem. You want your, but it's not going to kill you. Yes. Amy, I mean, April, I'm sorry, is curious. How many eyes does she have? Oh, it's kind of hard to see it. And maybe can, she's sitting so still. Oh, here, let me see if I can. Let's see. Uh, yeah, you can. <laughs> I'll get over here to our screen. Sorry for the wiggles. There we go. Any better? Sorry, friends. Oh. So close. Oh, you see a bit of dark yep. You can see some. Yeah. So they literally they have eight eyes. Kind of hard to see it. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's got her leg over at. But she's got eight eyes, and they're very simple. They're basically just used for detecting light and dark. It's those hairs that super they rely on the most. So it's the eyes are just kind of like I said, they're very simple. They're not really not like ours. So we can see color and all that. She can only see really detect dark light and movement, that kind of thing. Um, so it's mostly those hairs that let her know what's going on in her environment. Any other questions? Nope. Right. Not at the moment. What do you think? Not so creepy, right? Not at all. Some She's adorable. She's very sweet. She's a no girl. Party. Thank you, Gwen. Congrats. <laughs> And she's back. 
totally creeped out okay but then I started figuring out what these guys do they're not actually gonna crawl in my ear in the middle of the night and you know try to eat and attack me they're not predators but they will scavenge and I'll eat their leftover stuff just like Mickey and Cynthia were talking about with the millipede and centipede well centipede is predator sorry <laughs> um, with, with the millipede um, but these guys, they are detritivores, and they also eat the leftover decaying dead plants, animals, whatever they can find. They're not too picky. Now these guys, you guys ever been in a haunted house and hear all the really weird, creepy noises? Yes. You may have even heard sounds similar to what these guys can make. These are the hissing cockroaches. And yeah, it can catch you off guard. But are they trying to scare and eat you? Probably not, right? That hissing is for their protection. They're scared of you, but they're trying to hide it, right? It's like when somebody says a dog's bark is worse than its bite. Okay? So very similar. These guys, they do that hiss because right. they're scared. A lot of like when the tarantula throws hairs at you and you no longer want to eat it, right. that hiss might scare away a predator and not, I wouldn't want to eat a hissing cheeseburger. Uh, no, thank you. But yeah, so, and these guys, um, I was actually not aware of this, but these guys are, or well, the, the hissing cockroaches are uh, very common movie stars and common yes. pets. So I had no idea, but in all of the movies, you know, when they see all the big creepy bug screen bug scenes, um, you might see some of these guys if you look extra close. Mm -hmm. But that's because they're the least scary to deal with, right? <laughs> so for people who have no idea what animals are doing and they want to pick the easiest thing and the chillest thing they can mess with. Or put in a video. Okay, now that's a whole other topic, man. That's just. <laughs> but yeah. I'll give you creepy on that one. Buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So these are the hissing cockroaches. I'll go get the mail out for you. Check them out too. She's being Big boy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> so, for those of you who remember the hissing cockroaches, what do you guys notice about him? There you go. There we That's go. That's good. Nice. Perfect. Ooh. See his antenna moving around? Yep. Just checking out his surroundings, right? <laughs> You see his legs and all of the little spikes on his legs, right? They're super cool friends. 
So he has a very distinct feature that the female doesn't have, and that's gonna be his little horns. Little nubs on the top. And yeah, sometimes it feels kind of creepy when they're just walking on you and you're not and, and you're not prepared for it, not ready for it. But once you figure out, oh, it's just my little my roachy friend. We're good. <laughs> We're good. You know. I don't like to be caught off guard. Neither does this guy. Well, that's actually really cool. You can see his whole head <laughs> moving. That's a great yeah. profile, yeah. <laughs> see that? The, the, the yeah. part is their head, but it's not. Yeah, it's so that's, that's like his helmet, right? Yeah, that, it's so, the whole segment is the head there. Yeah. Good shot, says April. <laughs> I got you, friend. I got you. Mm. You can't you can't cross straight up though. <laughs> let's, let's not do that. It's too big for that. <laughs> well, yeah, these are also common pets because well, uh, they don't fly. Um, they don't really. They can't really go too far, right? They occasionally, yeah, they occasionally make a a slightly strange sound with the hissing. So that's kind of cool to have around or have on movie scenes. Where they make that noise. That's oh, a good shot right what do you there. guys think? Deep, does it come out of his mouth? Any guesses? Yeah. He's like determined to check out the iPad. <laughs> so his hissing noises actually come from what are called spiracles right down his back end. So all of those little black dots are actually holes in his exoskeleton. And he pushes air through. And that air just goes through the exoskeleton and makes that vibration and hissing noise. You are just going. It's like if you guys force air through your yeah. teeth. Yep. Very similar. I bet Very you can't do similar. it through your skin, though. Through your exoskeleton. Nope, not so much. Not so much. All right, buddy. Okay. Very cool. So I'm gonna go for my one other type of roachy friend. <laughs> <laughs> Only Megan has roachy friends. Everybody's friends. I have spider friends with millipede friends. I do have millie friends. How many friends do you have? I have a millie friend. <laughs> <laughs> Been a long day, folks. <laughs> All right, here we go. So this one. Anybody tell anything different Ooh. about this friend than I from the hissing these. friends? These are so cool. So these are Caribbean giant cave cockroaches. Awesome. Anybody see anything different? All I hear is whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, whoa. What are those? Can you see? Shell color? Shell color, yeah. Oh, oh there we go. Ah, yeah. Good eye. So the lighting kind of throws you off a little bit. You think it might be just as pattern. But no, this, these are actually wings. So this is a winged, mini legged, crawly friend. So, yes, I'll give it to you. It, it has wings. It can go further. A little bit more, uh, you know, potential to be creepy, right? But this friend is um, not using the wings right now, just using all those legs. <laughs> and these guys are, uh, again, recyclers, detritivores. These guys live in caves. Does anybody else live in caves? Can you guys think of any animals that live in caves? Bats. Yeah. And what do bats do besides? Oh. Yeah. But what what do bats and other uh, animals do that they don't usually clean up after? We have to sometimes clean it up after from pets. There we go. Got it. Poop. Yeah, so these 
these guys, they will eat the poop. Yeah, good. Very perfect. Very good use of that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but no, so these guys do eat the bat poop and anything they can find on the cave floors. So why do they have wings? Do they fly up to the top and roost with the bats? What do you think? They hang upside down too? No, nah, no. probably not. Not so much. Their, their little legs don't really. Oh, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, they're gonna hop over the poop piles. Um, <laughs> no, so actually, similar to hopping over poop piles, maybe they want to hop to the next poop pile that's on a little ledge because caves are full of little le ledges and crevices and holes and dips and valleys, right? So if you ever go on a cave hike and you don't smell poop everywhere, thank these guys. Thank your roaches, because that's their job. That's, that's what the roaches and the buggies and the inverts, that's their job. They have to try to boards, they're gonna clean up after everybody else. They're kind of like the parents of the world, right? They have to clean up everybody else's mess. Because, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be going out there cleaning up bat poop in the caves. No. Don't think that's in my job description. But, I mean, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. This is really cool. And you can, oh, he's he's noggin. Look at the noggin. I'm all about the noggins out today. Don't go, don't go back. They're much more active than the. the yeah, the yeah. They're they're very much so. Very much so. So yeah, that's these guys. Um, so we do have a question. Go ahead. Um, Crystal is wondering what food do they eat? So here at the zoo, um, our program animal roaches get a variety of things like lettuce or carrots or sweet potato, uh, just some plants, and they will stay in there with them for a few days and they'll probably eat it more when it when it's a little bit less fresh <laughs> um, yeah and they also get some um dog food and uh so yeah fish place that's right so a little bit of variety because again they are yeah they are on they're the they're outdoors yep so just give them all the extra good stuff they need all right <laughs> so all of your roaches, pretty cool, right? And did you know that I was looking up stuff about these guys just to find fun facts, and roaches can actually live probably about a month or so without food, but water, they can only live like a week without water. These guys are super sensitive, just like Mickey was explaining the exoskeleton, holding the water into their bodies, so yeah. Well, April's wondering, you know, since they're cave dwellers, do they see better in the dark than in daylight then? Is their, is their vision good in the dark? So, what do you think they use most in the dark? Just like people. What, what, I, I wish you would, <laughs> I wish you would go back on the hand. I keep trying to angle you to the hand. There we go. <laughs> um, what do you guys think? What senses do they use most? Would they use their vision? Or what is he feeling around with? Let's see. Um, what are those two things sticking out on front, guys? Yeah, what is, what is he looking at? Look out, look how substantial they are in this species. Yeah. yeah, because these guys do live in the dark most of the time, right? So they use their antenna to feel around and to sense what's going on and where. <laughs> They do have, um, I believe they do have good night vision, um, but I'm not exactly sure uh, so the yeah, limitations. Right. Great vision, but the antenna I got by their number one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, great question, though. Very nice. Yeah. Okay, that's it for these guys. All right, little friend.
not. Sometimes we need them and don't even know it, right? So, I think that's about all. Do we have anything else? Yeah, maybe that's I like to show them the, um, here. Mm -hmm. the, this is my favorite one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> there's that. Friend. I was saying with Cynthia meant to be like, could you imagine a world without these guys? Right, without them, without our cockroaches, our millipedes, our worms, all those different invertebrates cleaning up the world for us. And they weren't there. And then with, between all the animals pooping, all the animals dying, all the plants dying, and nothing cleaning that up, there would literally be an ocean of be <laughs> I don't live in that world, so thanks for inverts, guys. <laughs> Thank you, inverts. Yay! <laughs> um, this, this one, yeah. this one, this one is that. Yep. That's the, yeah, this one. one's great. Um, yep. Beneficial insects have a lovely little chart. There we go. Um, so we have beetles feeding on dead animals. Um, dragonflies. Being on mosquitoes and larvae of mosquitoes, the silkworm moth. Um, so, silk? source of silk, guys, that's yeah. something that we use every day, right? Um, or a lot. Um, the bees, of course, we all know that the bees are pollinators, as are pretty the much one, all of our inverts. One in every three bites of food, you can thank the pollinator. Exactly. Yeah. So, and then even somebody as small as the ladybugs um, and the water boatmen, you can even see that from there. Hmm, it's there tiny, you go. right? They and these guys, perfect. even if their purpose is serving as food. Yeah. Right? So a lot they of help inverts keep and the food insects, chain going. Yep. They're a big part of this uh, food chain because, like we said, there are 75, no, excuse me. 750,000 different species of invertebrates. Arthropods, right? Arthur, arthropods. <laughs> Sorry. I've done a lot of research and it's getting a little, a little twisted. <laughs> um, so there are many species, and again, they do outnumber us very much so. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, but they're good to have around. Very nice. Very all right. So joining us next week, we're going to do part two. Part two. And they're even cuter. All right. Slither in. Yes. Uh, so join us for some, for some squishy fun. I don't really know where I'm going with it. <laughs> um, and thanks for coming, guys. And I hope you are all. Any questions? Yeah. Yep. Uh, we're going to chat. Are you on? Nope. We're good. I'm on Q&A. All right. Okay. Thanks for coming, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye.